Mito World Sake 101 Des. Don't forget the Des. Hey, Marie, how's it going? Good. Good. You know what? Today, we have a special treat for you. Um, we're going to be drinking something from the Okonomatsu Brewery. I happened to go to one of their tastings yesterday at the sake shop. I got to meet the Toji, and, you know, they had some really good sake. Um, they are coming up with a new one in August, and it's called the Sakura. Uh, but that one wasn't available for tasting, so I got what I thought was the next best thing. <laughs> anyway, today we are drinking Okurumatsu Ginjo. Now, this Ginjo, as you know, is a quality of sake, and it's sort of based on the grading of the polishing. So you have your Ginjo and your Dai Ginjo, depending on how much the rice is polished down. This one is technically a Dai Ginjo, but they, they chose to call it a Ginjo for America, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay? The... Brewery is, hello, Okonomatsu Shuzo, and it's in Fukushima. The The rice type of this is a custom blend grown in Fukushima. Grown in course. Fukushima. Um, so that's what's, you know, kind of neat is it's a special homegrown rice specifically for them. Now, this brewery has been brewing sake forever. So it's kind of neat that they use homegrown rice because it's kind of supporting the local business thing, something that we try to do in Hawaii a lot. Okay, say my buaiwa. Semi buai wa 60%. Okay, alcohol content on this is 14 to 15%, and the sake meter value is plus 4, which means it's going to lean towards the dry side. Okay? According to the machine. According to the machine, <laughs> right. And the acidity on this is a 1.3. It's kind of mild, actually. Uh, most of the time, you'll see higher, like 1.6 to 1.8. So 1.3 is relatively low. Okay, let's give it an open Z. Where's, first they don't of all, have the English name for this? Oh, no English name for this one. It's just Okonomatsu Ginjo. Um, this is really nice bottle. It's, it has like a different fluting than most. It's kind of look like shoyu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this one you have to pull the thing. I like these bottles because of the cap inside, but opening them can be a little dangerous because you can lose a finger that way. Finger. <sighs> oh, they don't really pop. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like these kind of caps, right? These kind of caps are cool. All right, today we're going to fill up the bottle here so you can see the color. And that's because last week, transporting everything from studio back to the house, I broke more sake glasses and I forgot to buy some. Whoa. Okay, so you can see the color is relatively clear. It has a really, really, really teeny yellow bit, but mostly it's clear. Um, wow, that looks nice and cold. Okay. Gracias, Des. Big one for you. Very fruity. Very fruity, very but fruity. not like strong smell. No, it's really light. It's here, kampai. 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 Kampai desu. Oh, this is good. It's actually sweet, a little. It's trippy no. though, because the, with the, that that, that fruity smell is there, and you're expecting it to be really sweet, but it's dry. It has a mild sweetness to it, but it's drier than you would expect. And uh, well, yeah, it's not sweet, sweet. No, it's not sweet, but the smell smells like it's mm -hmm. going to taste like candy, right? And then when you taste it, it doesn't taste like candy. It tastes like. Frolicking in the meadow, and a nice spring day across the morning dew. Well, I like it. It's a, uh, it balances really well. Like you can, the acidity is so low, there is no kind of bite for a dry sake, but it finishes really clean, really smooth, and it's a balance between sweet and not sweet. I think it has a big bite. You think it has a big bite? How much drinking did you do this weekend? <laughs> Keep that uh, to yourself. <laughs> no, it doesn't bite me that much. Do you have a bite? You don't get it? See, I think he might have been drinking a lot this weekend. Yeah, it's a it's a little crisp on the entry. It's, 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 it's the like the front, right? Yeah, it's not my tongue but it goes away really quickly and it's super mellow. Like I think I could drink this whole thing. Kind of super easy to drink. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think the thing that that I noticed at first is it surprises you because that fruit smell seems like it's gonna be really sweet. And then once it dries out, like you taste it, it's light, it's smooth, it's really quick on the finish. And uh, this one, actually, I tasted it yesterday at room temperature, and it's a little bit more bitey at room temperature. Like, and then the flavor opens up a lot more. So you can do this either cold or room temperature. Um, I didn't segregate the bottle. I should have made some room temperature and some left cold so we could taste it, but uh, this is pretty good. Like, honestly, like this. Now, one thing that you can really get out of this is it's clean. I mean, really, really clean tasting. And I know that sounds hard to understand, but what we mean by that is you don't taste a lot of rice, you don't taste a lot of yeast, you don't taste a lot of water, nor do you taste a lot of alcohol. It's kind of just like even keel. And so when we say something tastes balanced or something tastes clean, that's sort of what it is. A lot of times we'll say it has a ricey taste or a ricey mm -hmm. texture. And that time, in that in those cases, the sake is a little thicker. This is not thick at all. Very, very yeah, easy to drink. You can't really tell what the sake tastes like. No, it's it, it has a little bit maybe pear or lychee, but not too strong. And I don't even like lychee, honestly. I think they taste squishy. Maybe that's a texture thing. Okay, anyway, so Okonomatsu Brewery, as I was talking to the Toji yesterday, they have been producing artisan sake since 1716. That's a freaking crap load of time. And one of their secrets to success, which is neat about sake because you can't really copy this, all right? They are stationed at the base of Mount Adatara. I just like saying that. Adatara. Adatara. Aratara. Aratara. Adatara. Yeah, Aratara. Adatara. Aratara. Stop saying that. Adatara. Okay. So being on the base of this mountain, that mountain gets a lot of snow. And you always hear us say that a sake is made from, you know, fresh mountain water, fresh snow water, whatever's like that. Um, what I didn't really account for until he told me yesterday is it takes 40 years so the snow that melts this year in 2011 will be in the sake in 2051. 40 yeah. 40 years? Yeah. 2051 bottle of Konamatsu will come from the snow from this winter. It takes wow. 40 years for the snow to melt and so work its way through the aquifer. Snow water from when? My birthday. What? <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, I so you're only twenty one. I am twenty one <laughs> in most countries. In most countries. So it's really neat though that the way that it trickles down and each mountain is has different compositions. You know, uh on one side it'd be a little bit more volcanic than the other. There's different, you know, type of rocks and stuff. So the spring water in different regions is gonna taste different mostly based on, you know, how well or how that mountain sort of filters the water. I'm really curious now because I got to look at, you know, big volcanic mountains like we have here in Hawaii. I wonder how long it takes the water to basically, we don't have snow, but basically work down. But it should be around 40, 50 years too. We do have snow. On Big ha Island. <laughs> big Island. Haleakala. Wow, very good. Haleakala. Whew, I'm sorry. Why don't you say that eight times real fast while I drink this? That was a joke. Stop that. Anyway, um, let's give it a let's give it a test. Test? Yeah, uh, a, a score. Like, what do, <laughs> what do you think? What do, what do you give it? Mm, Wait, I, I'm gonna need to drink some more for that. I will say four point five for now, and when I pair with some food, it might be five. Well, I I talked to the Toji yesterday. And he's like, you're really going to want to pair this with the mild sashimi, um, something not too, like hirame, mm. something not too oily or not too, you know, flavorful, something really mild. And then they sort of bring it out and complement that. Um, also, I think this would taste really good with like agedashi tofu, mm. you know, something like that. And uh, yakitori, but, you know, like shio yakitori, like uh, torihara, like the chicken skin. Like fried chicken or skins with salt. Steam fish. Steam fish, yes. Um, 
Hawaii, we have a good fish called moi, and you can get steam moi, and this will go really good what with steam moi. What is moi? Moi is, is a really, really light fish, kind of like... Um, white meat. It's very white meat. I don't know. I forgot what the English name is, but it's like Thai, like, you know, mm. Naruto Thai. What is that? Red snapper? Yeah. So very light, something easy, nothing too bold, nothing too oily. Um, and I agree with Marie. I'm going to give this, I can give this a five. And I'm going to tell you why. I would just give it a four or five. But here is an amazing sake that you can buy for 22 bucks. So oh, that's cheap. It's cheap. This tastes like wow. what should be fifty dollars sake, but it's only twenty two bucks. So, for the um, baller on the budget segment, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give it an extra half a point because without being too expensive, you get to drink really high quality handmade sake. So, I give oh. it a solid five. That's good, right? That is good. Um, Tover. Tover gives it a five too. Because he likes the twenty-two dollar price tag too. <laughs> <laughs> he won't admit it, but he's kind of cheap too. This is good stuff here, kanpai. So once again, we like to remind you it's Okoromatsu Genjo. You can get it at your local sake shop, our local sake shop, the sake shop. We'd like to thank them for allowing us to have this great bottle and meeting the Toji yesterday, and remember you can get this at a lot of restaurants. This one is really common in the U.S. And I think if you're going to go there and you know you want to try something, make sure you get a dish. A shio means salt-based, so you have a salt-based dish. Um, nothing with um, tare. Tare is sauce, like um, ponzu. Like teriyaki sauce. Teriyaki. teriyaki is tare. Like, it's kind of a thick, and you don't want nothing that powerful. You want a really kind of mild-flavored something to go with this. And... Uh, the hirame is a, is a great sashimi to go with this because it's not too... I wouldn't go against, like, maguro or, like, your otoro. That's going to be a little bit too oily. Go with something a little lighter. And you'll probably see that... If you if you don't even know sashimi, when you see the white fish circling around on a, on a like, nigiri, just a kind of really pale white fish, try that one. That's one of my favorites. Thai. The either Thai or... Um, um, not hirame. Um, hamachi. Hamachi. Hamachi, man. Or saba. I love hamachi. Saba. This might go good with a good saba. Anyway, Maxi Priest and Saba. I'd like to thank you once again for watching our show. I have been Doc Rock. That there is... <laughs> Marie Mulan. She does look like Mulan, actually. And uh, thank you for watching Sake 101. Don't forget, you can find everything by going to bit.ly slash sake101. You can also hit us up on Facebook at Mito World or on Twitter at Mito World. Until we see you next week, Mataraishu. Kampai. Janay. Remember, Kampai means empty cup. <laughs>